depending on how strong this interaction is, uh, this particle can, uh, can or cannot, depending again, can, depending on how strong the absorption is, uh, the absorption site, right? Uh, it may get stuck in the absorption site, or it may move around. Okay, so you may have surface diffusion. So you have uh, uh, surface impact, right, collision process, absorption process. You have surface diffusion. And then finally, uh, at some point, uh, if the condition is right, the, uh, the atom, the absorbing may dissolve. Okay, so, so that's the general picture. You have sort of a three-step thing. You have uh, particle incident, right, collision. You have uh, diffusion. Migration on the surface, and then finally you have desorption, absorption, migration, and desorption. Right? Three step uh, general picture of any particle that you throw at your surface. And so we talked about already uh, that uh, this kind of uh, 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 time scale, right? And and we lay uh, so so this kind of time scale just jump a little bit ahead about this sort of time scale. Uh, the time scale, the, the way it stays on the surface, how long it stays on the surface, depends on the interaction itself be between your particle beam and the surface atom itself. So if you look at the uh, busy absorption cutoff, which is 5 k character mole around this line here, the, uh, the, 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 the absorption, the time, uh, the amount of time that the particles stay on the surface before it gets dissolved is about 100 picosecond. It's of the order of less than a nanosecond. Okay, so this is a, a number that I like you to remember, right? 5 kcal per mole and about 0.1 nanosecond or so, right? That's the kind of uh, picture you have for busy absorption because it depends on, on these uh, energy, that this, this desorption energy that we'll talk about. And as, you, as your uh, desorption energy goes up, right, the energy required to dissolve your, uh, your particle, uh, the, the, the uh, mean stay time, right, the lifetime, if you like, the lifetime on your, of the particle on your surface, the hang around your surface, increases, of course. And so if you reach 150 uh, 50 kcal per mole, uh, as in the case of oxygen, absorbent tungsten. So this is tungsten oxide, you know, formation of surface tungsten oxide um, that you see in your light bulb, right? In the test light bulb, you uh, crack your light bulb and you will see some yellow powder. And that yellow powder is tungsten oxide. Uh, and it's very strong. It's just stuck on your filament. And of course, the tungsten filament will go out very quickly. And, uh, and that oxide will never leave because uh, the oxide, uh, the oxygen atom on that tungsten uh, wire uh, takes a uh, century to, uh, to come out. So it's extremely stable. And it only takes about 150 kcal per mole, right? This is the, the interesting thing. The energy uh, is not all that great. If you're talking about 50 kcal per mole, it is, uh, is the same as uh, 50 or 40 kcal per mole. It will take the entire age of the Earth, right, to uh, dissolve this uh, this molecule. Okay, this particle. And we talked about uh, zero chemical absorption nickel earlier. Is take a hundred years. It's about thirty kcal per mole. Okay, that's the mean state time of this zero molecule on nickel, right? Is a hundred years. So you can see how the state frequency, the resident time, if you like. Uh, this guy stay on the particle right here depends on the uh, desorption, the amount of energy you require to dissolve the surface, which is this guy here, right? which is this guy to take out. Let's say you are here, the energy required to dissolve your, your particle will be, of course, from here to here, that go out to infinity. Okay, so that's the all uh, very qualitative picture that I've shown so far. So let me give you a, a, a little bit of a map, which, which I don't want to emphasize too much, but I like to just show you a couple of pages of these, uh, how, how you think about this. Uh, in terms of reasonable physics that, that we, we picture, the 
picture that we have in, in this kind of thing. So, so here we have impinging ray, and then we have desorption ray. The, the, the particle comes up, comes in, and V is the particle that comes out. So here's a, a, a very quick uh, picture of kinetic consideration of these uh, absorption of any particle theme. So we write down very quickly this I, which is impinging ray. Think of it as a particle flux uh, hitting your surface, and in terms of particle per centimeter square uh, and uh, per time, right? So it's exactly like flux, that's the, the, the kind of uh, rate of uh, particle beam hitting your surface. And this, of course, uh, I, I don't want to derive it, I just want to uh, make you uh, feel comfortable about uh, uh, thinking that it is reasonable. Because uh, the impinging rate, of course, should depend on your pressure. The higher the pressure, the more particle beam you would think that it pinch on the pump uh, in the uh, in the surface. So so you you would think that okay, well, you know, it's reasonable. The the impinging rate, the flux density if you like, uh, should be proportional to some some of this uh, pressure that you have. And it's also uh, inversely proportional to the square root of psi. Uh, that is a bit longer story, so I won't, I won't go into it. Uh, but I am hoping that you can see the, the, the reasonable uh, picture that how the impingement can be Then you talk about the mean surface lifetime. You remember our picture of, of this uh, particle, the, the, the light, uh, so it, it comes in I, it hangs around, and then it comes up. So what about this hang around time? How, how do we think about this hang around time? The mean service lifetime is, uh, is, is often written as one over uh, the uh, desorption frequency, how often the particle can come up. Okay? And it's, it's, it's written as some constant, right? An exponential decay. It's not kind of like a, a Arrhenius type uh, equation whereby uh, e to the delta x desorption divided by RT, which is again quite reasonable uh, in terms of first year uh, chemistry that we think in terms of Arrhenius. It should depend on some sort of activation energy, you know, because uh, because the, the, the stronger, higher the desorption, uh, higher this desorption uh, lifetime, the more energy it takes, right, the longer it should stay. Right, because it would take more energy uh, to remove the particle. So this lifetime should go down. And then uh, there's this uh, tau naught, which is kind of a, a, a fundamental part, a constant related to this particular surface, uh, is proportional to this inwards uh, a temp frequency, uh, which is uh, under normal one atmosphere high pressure is, is of the order of 10 to 13 hertz. Uh, is, is the amount of uh, uh, particle hitting your surface per unit time. And then you have something very complicated, which I don't won't have time to go into, which you will see in uh, statistical uh, thermodynamics, which is related to partition function. So ignore this. Uh, think of it as just some sort of proportional to this uh, attempt frequency, but there are bases in statistical thermodynamics that you can you can work these things out. And typically, this uh, this uh, tau naught is of the order of uh, 10 to minus 13, 10 to minus nanosecond to uh, 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 way below picosecond, right? Uh, and uh, picosecond is 10 to minus 12. Femtosecond to 10 to minus 15 is about one femtosecond to about nanosecond. This is of the uh, of this basic tau naught, and this delta uh, H uh, desorption depends, of course, on the type of attraction force that you have. Whether you have Van der Waals, right? Remember the cutoff is 5 kK per mole. Van der Waals below 5 kK per mole, which gives you PZ absorption. Above 5 kK per mole, you would have uh, Coulombic type interactions, right? Uh, you would have uh, polar, either Coulombic interaction in terms of ionic force or in terms of polar forces. And 
then you would also have, uh, have other very strong